So in this class, we're not going to uh, we're not going to have homework. This isn't the type of a class where you're going to get a grade and all of that. But you're going to have activities, and then you yourself are going to decide to apply what you learn. You're not going to get um, you're not going to get activities and such. So uh, what what I want to remind you then is. Uh, just to be here on time to get your seat because again next week we might have more people trying to come in be here on time and um, I was gonna say something else lost my train of thought but um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give you a, a document and we'll, and we'll look at this document uh, because with just about any endeavor you don't wanna you don't wanna shoot for the target before you have practice uh, and so, for example, I teach a, an, an Android development class. We make an Android app in there. And we don't start to write the code right away and, 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 and develop the app. We, we take a moment to basically storyboard or on a regular sheet of paper or on a blackboard or whatever, write, this screen will have this, and it will be linked to this. And you click this button and it'll go to there. You just kind of sketch it out. You get an idea before you get into the actual app. That also uh, that concept will also help us here in search engine optimization. In that, yes, I've got activities about you need to do this in your webmaster tools, and you need to do this, you need to do that. But it's going to be a good idea to first uh, step back and uh, analyze your your company a bit. Um, this is something that we do for our clients. Uh, we submitted a 40-page result at the end of last year to one of my clients. Uh, let me actually show this client to you. I'll, I'll probably be bringing it up as the semester goes on, but I do have to warn you it's um, getting close to dinner time and it might make you hungry. I seem to work with a lot of clients that work with food, but if you want to check out this client, uh, HTTP, it's a Mexican food restaurant, the name is hard to say, that is Aki stexcoco.com they are a restaurant in down in Chula Vista they started in Tijuana in 1990 they came to the US in 2008 I believe and then this year they've expanded to LA so they're they're doing pretty well they've been featured on the travel channel um, they get featured uh, uh, they've gotten featured on, on Rachel Ray's uh, magazine um, they were at uh, Reader Feast uh, just this past weekend, so uh, they're getting some really pretty good renown. They're having a, a Google uh, a Google City Local event thing today, tomorrow, this week, or something. So uh, I've worked with this client since 2010. Me and my company, we do their website, we did their photography, we do their human resources, their social media. And what I'm going to talk to you right now, this document that I'm going to give you, is a variation of what we did with, with them. So, Mexican food restaurant, their main, their claim to fame is that they are traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. Now you hear the word barbecue, and you think of a variety of things, perhaps. Kansas City barbecue, Texas barbecue, American barbecue. Well, barbecue, barbacoa, in, in, in Mexico is different. And here, this is lamb barbecue. This is slow-roasted lamb barbecue cooked in the traditional method of the of the ancient uh, town of Texcoco, which is in northern north of Mexico City. Aquí es Texcoco is here is Texcoco or this is Texcoco. It's about uh, here is the authentic food, this traditional food in California. So we did their marketing, their logos, their slogan, all of that stuff. And I bring this up because also we'll be looking at um, what I'm going to be teaching you is, is something real done for clients, uh, this activity that I'm going to give you. If you want to know about, uh, about them, there's an about page, what press they've gotten, etc. Notice there's a blog here. I'll be touching on blogs as well. Uh, every website can have a blog, and I recommend to have a blog. So you think, well, well my website doesn't make sense. What am I going to write about? Think about this, a Mexican food restaurant. What's their blog about? If I go check, this blog has articles, short articles about the variety of things that this restaurant 
is, is, is about. Uh, for example, okay, there's a tooting our own horn about feature up being featured on Travel Channel, yes. But about the craft beers served at the restaurant. More information about lamb barbacoa itself. The traditional beverages served here, the aguas frescas, like <clears throat> agua de horchata, and that sort of thing. So this blog serves to educate people on the food and the beverages offered at the restaurant. The big thing about the food here is that it's, uh, it's slow cooked. It's uh, got maguey leaves wrapped around it, which are those things right there, which look like agave plants, which are related. Maguey plants are related to agave, and everyone knows agave from tequila. Now, you're not going to get drunk from eating this lamb, but uh, they do make an alcoholic beverage from that plant, not tequila, pulque. So the restaurant is one of the few, especially in San Diego, that offers uh, authentic pulque. Because usually you can go to a Mexican uh, grocery and buy pulque. It's in a can. It's pasteurized. It's lost some of its flavor and potency. And here they offer the, the, the more authentic pulque. So this blog is about educating you what's in, what, what, what can you get out of the restaurant. So as we'll talk about blogging a little bit later, this is also how you can help, how we can help get you on that page of results, that top 10 page where we're all fighting for with content, uh, content published on a regular basis, blogs. So we'll talk about blogs, and I also teach a blogging class, completely three, four weeks, whatever it is, just about blogs. But remind me, and I'll get back to it. This particular website is made in uh, WordPress. If you go to my website, my company's website, pndinteractive.com, that's made in WordPress. And if you go to the portfolio, basically all the sites that are in the portfolio are also WordPress. Um, I started off, and my company started off, uh, making websites in Dreamweaver. And we, make re we made really nice websites for them, for clients. Functional, they worked well, they looked nice, all of that. But then we would always get to a point where the client they wanted updates. Okay, no problem, we'll do the updates. And then uh, they wanted to be able to make updates on a more regular basis, maybe a little more affordably, so they want to make a change to their site. No problem, my company is very open. We give the client all their passwords and everything. Uh, we're happy to do that. The client asks, I want to make a change to this page in, in the old days in Dreamweaver. And I said, okay, uh, no problem. Do you have Dreamweaver? They say, what's Dreamweaver? So they buy Dreamweaver, they can make a change, but then they have to learn how to use Dreamweaver to just make a change on the page. So it was a big stumbling block for a while, and then until we moved to WordPress, where we can design a great looking website, a very functional website, and make it a lot easier for a client to make a change on their website without having to buy the WordPress software. The Dreamweaver software ranges between uh, 200 to 400 dollars. WordPress is for a much more affordable price of zero dollars. So anyone can start using WordPress, and that's what my company has moved into using WordPress. That's why I'm going to talk about WordPress most often in this class. But if you've got Weebly or Joomla or Drupal, etc., you should be able to still do what we're going to talk about. It's just that I recommend for the newest, most modern, coolest websites nowadays, you might want to look into WordPress. Question? Can you take the Dreamweaver website and take the contents of Dreamweaver to WordPress? Yeah, you can take the content pretty much, copy and paste it from Dreamweaver into WordPress, but it's going to be a lot of work because you're going to be going from page to page. You open up your, dream, your About page in Dreamweaver, copy that, and you go into your About page in WordPress and paste it. And then you do that to the Contact page and then the Products page, all 20 pages of products. So it's doable, but um, there's no easy way to upgrade an old classic Dreamweaver site into a new modern type of WordPress site. It's a lot of hand uh, manual labor. So next week you need to be sure that when you come, find out what platform your website was made in and also come with your password if you choose to do the activity in class. 
we're going to need to log into our website and make a couple little changes so that what we'll do is we will connect our website with the Google and Bing Webmaster Tools and that will allow us to, che to check on the, on the success of what we're doing in this class. We're going to be talking about um, search engine optimization and we want to know, are we getting more hits? Are people staying longer on our website? Are they finding the sub page? We need to connect our website with the search engines. It's a little technical, but I've got instructions how to do it, and we'll do it together. But you need your login. Now there's two logins. One you do need, one you don't. One is the login. If you've got WordPress, one is the login to your WordPress site. That's the one you need. The other one, which you probably don't need, is the login to your provider. Go, um, Texcoco's website is hosted in GoDaddy. This is what is paid for on a yearly basis to be online. We'll talk about it in more detail, of course, but this is a different login than the login to edit my site, in my case. You need to research because sometimes your login to GoDaddy is going to take you to the place to edit your site. So during the, the break at the end of the day, you know, talk to me one on one. We can try to figure it out. Talk to whoever set up your site, try to get your passwords, and we're going to need to log in and make, uh, make a few simple changes to our site so we can take full advantage of the search engines next week. Question. If you don't have a website, are you going to uh, supply it? Like a website that we can like log in? No, um, that's out of our scope. I'll be providing you with all the instructions on how to do it, but then once you get a website, you'll be able to apply it to your website. Questions? So, so, you mean, uh, what, 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 one at a time. She was a little faster on the draw here. So, so when you have a website, does it automatically mean you're online? No, you could be online with an email address. You could be online uh, on Facebook, but that's not your website. So you need to have something that is a .com, a .net, .biz, that's being... That's so whenever you have um, an idea of how many people visited you, how often, and so on and so forth, you would have that that's all part of the web development, or is that part of the online? That, that's part of... Um, that's a good question. That's a, it's not part of web development because that's the actual building of the site constructing the site. This stuff about finding your hits and all of that, that's more of the marketing aspect. SEM, SEO, the marketing. And question in the back. Sorry, I cut you off, but question here? I have the Google Plus page. Would mm -hmm. that be the same? Could I even use that? No, Google Plus has its own set of uh, statistics and such. We won't really cover that here, but Google Plus, uh, you can find out that detail in, in Google Plus itself. Question back there? Yes. Yeah, if I install WordPress on my own class and come this way, would it work class? Um, no, because this needs to be online for the search engine to be able to find it. Yeah, but I can connect to the network. No, that's different. You need to have your website saved on an online location. Just because you can connect to the internet doesn't mean that your website is online, technically. So again, we can talk during the lab time to, to fully figure out exactly your situation, but most of the time you're going to need your website on some .com that anyone can visit, .net, etc. Question? Uh, you can zoom this so it's part of your site, where we tell the people that it's WordPress or versus something else? Yeah, we can do that right now, actually. That's a good point. People want to know, am I using WordPress? So here's an example uh, so that everyone's kind of looking at the same thing. If you go to the... If you go to the, the, the restaurant's website, akiestexoko.com, uh, on any website, basically, you can, um, uh, can right-click on an empty area, and you should have a view page source, or, or view code, whatever the web browser says. I'm going to go to view page source. And this is going to bring up all, this is going to pull the curtain behind the website, and this is all the code that makes up the site the front page, 500 lines of code. And um, if you look around in here, you might see a telltale sign that it's WordPress 
is if you see some line of code that says wp-content. So instead of kind of hunting for it, you can press on the keyboard control F to find and then search WP content and if it shows up more likely than not that is a WordPress site because that stands for WordPress content so if you view the code of a website and you search for WP dash content probably it's a WordPress site it's a standard nomenclature yes um, what is the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. I mean, obviously, usually com is something you would pay for, right? And the org is free, or I'm confused between WordPress.com. The WordPress software itself is free, but you can get it in two ways. Uh, WordPress.com, you can go here and anyone can create a website right now for free. And it'll be a WordPress site. The problem is your website will be victorsbakery.wordpress.com, not victorsbakery.com. If you want victorsbakery.com, that's when you pay. Either wordpress.com or a company like GoDaddy. I would not recommend to get your website from wordpress.com, even though you can pay, I don't know, $20 a year and then you'll get victorsbakery.com. I don't recommend that. I have not used that, so I don't know all the details of it, but I know that there's limitations in the free version. I don't know if those limitations go away once you pay for the paid version, but some of these things that we'll need to do in here might be difficult or not able to be done through wordpress.com. So I'll talk in detail, but GoDaddy is a company that I recommend. Bluehost.com is another one. They have a variety of prices and de uh, deals, and right now you can get it for $3.95 a month, etc. GoDaddy, Bluehost, mm. Hostmonster.com. There's a lot of them. Those are the three off the top of my head that I've dealt with. Hostgator. These are the three that I've dealt with off the top of my head that uh, I, I know that I've worked with. There's many more out there. But to finish answering this question, the, then the WordPress.org is basically where the manual, instruction manual of WordPress, the WordPress software is at. Here's you where you would go to read what every screen means, what every button does, the blog, the updates, WordPress 4.0 just came out last week. Um, this is where you would go. This is where you would go to download the software, but you normally don't need to go here because this is the technical way to set up WordPress. If you get GoDaddy or HostMonster or whatever, you buy HostMonster, there's going to be a button that says Install WordPress. It's done. If you go to WordPress.org, you have to download it, upload it to your server, create a database, connect everything, create a user, and then you've got WordPress. These companies nowadays, one-click installation. You get GoDaddy, you pay your $80 a year, whatever. There's a button that says Install WordPress, you've got WordPress. So that's the big difference. WordPress.org is where the manual and all the technical stuff is at. WordPress.com is where you can get up, get your feet wet in WordPress.com in using the WordPress software, but it's limited. So with my Joomla site, which is hosted at Freehostia, or in the is my address to where my administrator is at for my site and just my administrator name and password. Yeah, so whatever platform you might have, uh, bring in that administrator login password. It should help us. Question? So, uh, like WordPress.com or Wix or uh, any of that, you don't own that, that name? It's kind of, um, you have to read each one of their um, their, their, their contract in terms of service, I, I can't tell you exactly. Many times your content is yours, but using the service has limitations, such as if for whatever reason your site is controversial, they might take it down. No. 
you get the most control if you go through the step of buying service at one of these providers. They range in, in price. Uh, there's still some of these terms of service about, uh, you know, I don't know, illegal content and such, but you definitely have much more control, but it's not free. And there was a hand here a moment ago. I just wanted to know when you, when you were in the code, mm -hmm. what was that control F? Was it yeah, control F to find. Okay, and then you pop in. And then so you search for this particular term and WP content, and that usually lets you know that this is a WordPress site. So now. Before we get too off track, remember it's not a WordPress class. I'll talk about more details of WordPress a little bit later. Question? If you buy a domain name, mm -hmm. say from web.com, mm -hmm. and you want to use it for services? You need two things to have your little piece of the internet. One is the domain name, and one is the hosting. So you do need them both. If I, have, if I want victorsbakery.com, I'm going to buy the domain name and pay some amount of money, seven, ten, twelve dollars, and then I'm going to pay the hosting to upload my pictures, my products, WordPress, and that's going to range also five to eight dollars a month. So I'm going to, I see a range between fifty and ninety dollars a year based on all of these companies. Sometimes they give you uh, $20 the first year for everything. Uh, I don't know the full prices here, web.com, but they're all very competitive. And that's basically, you need both. You need the, the domain name, which is the victorsbakery.com, and you need the hosting, which is the, the hard drive space to upload everything to, where it actually exists. So they're two different transactions. They don't have to be the same. They don't have to be. Uh, I, I run into clients that one client buys the name over at name.com, but then they buy the hosting at hostgator.com, and that works. I think it's more of a hassle because you're dealing with two different companies for tech support, for example. But most of these will allow you to buy the domain name and the hosting from the same place. If they don't, um, you might want to go to a company that offers both. That way it's just less effort. Bluehost.com, you can buy the domain name and the hosting in one place. GoDaddy also. I haven't used web.com. I've heard of it, but uh, I'm sure they offer... There's domain names and hosting. They offer both, apparently. So um, that's what you'll need for next week. Your login information, your control panel login, whatever it's called, your login to edit your site. We might not necessarily mean or need your login to your host. Usually we need the login for the actual site. So you took the photographs? Mm -hmm. Not of Rachel Ray, but <laughs> but of Andrew Zimmern, I did. And the food and all of that. Yes. Um, the main name going back there. Uh -huh. Is all the main names for sale, or do you have. Or is there something that you can just. There. Well, since the web is 25 years old now, there are many names that have been taken. Um, that if I wanted victor.com, that was taken a long time ago. So um, they, uh, they, they are. You can invent names too. You know, I can go in and go to GoDaddy and search for and possibly get this name right there. That might be available. It's a little hard to say, but um, you can always search. So as long as nobody has the rights to it. So I'm going to trademark that. Ojoyfojazda.com. So the more domain names you have, the more Yes, um, but we have to be careful about this. Let's say for this particular client, we've got Texcoco.com, aquí es Texcoco.com, Texcoco.biz, aquí es Texcoco.whatever. Let's say I've got four domain names. 
I would get into a problem with the search engines if on all of those four pages I have the same content. So the exact same website on all of those four names, the search engines don't like that. They will see that was an old technique that used to work that now will hurt you because it was abused. So you won't be number one anymore, you'll be 101. I don't know what number, but you'll be down there because this technique was, was abused. Uh, so, if I have different .com, .net, and such, but not the same content, a variety of content, that could help me. So, we just want to be aware of that. Usually, you're going to have one website with one topic. That's what the search engines want. I'm dealing with a client right now that one website of hers will be selling these sort of bracelets, and another website will be selling stuffed animals. They're both her products, but she's got them on different sites because it's different content. So, you can't... Um you are able to purchase .com.org, and you can just take it to anything.com. Yeah. Because that doesn't hurt you. No, that, does, that doesn't hurt you. That, that, that is that if uh, I get texcoco.com, .net, .biz, and yeah, and then make all of those other ones go back to the .com. That, that won't hurt. Because that's a way to um, you know claim your name, claim your brand, so no one else does. So if I wanted to set up a website, would I go to GoDaddy? Is there any reason why I would need to take like your would want to take your WordPress class? Yeah, because we're, uh, GoDaddy is only really gonna like it's like GoDaddy is gonna sell you the car, but you know how to drive. So I gotta I gotta do all the the stuff myself with GoDaddy. GoDaddy does sell you a package where you can easily make a website, but in my opinion, when people come in with that kind of website, it's very limited. They're not gonna be able to do many of the things we talk about because it's so easy to work with. It's not very powerful. So even if you buy your domain and a simple website from GoDaddy, that's not enough for you to really do what we're going to talk about in this class. Now, I didn't notice off-topic unrelated to the class. Does anyone know if the people that were, the person that was sitting on that space left for the day? No. Yeah, Yes. So I noticed uh, looking at the uh, Mexican barbecue place mm -hmm. that you used Yoast SEO. Mm -hmm. What's your take on uh, Yoast versus All in One? Um, when we talk about this, will be definitely on day three. We're going to talk about plugins that in, that make it easier to uh, plugins that make it easier to add SEO features to our websites. And two of the big ones are Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, and the all-in-one SEO plugin. My take on that is that they are both very useful and effective. In either one that you learn to use, stick with it. Uh, in my case, on most of my websites, and we'll talk about it in detail, but we use Yoast. The Yoast SEO plugin rhymes with toast, I guess. And uh, we use that for uh, adding extra features. But I will talk about in detail what I like and what I don't, and what's useful and what's not. Used. Now, this only works in WordPress. So if you've got Joomla, this doesn't work in Joomla. This is, this is just WordPress. I'm sure there's plugins for every platform, but I'm going to talk about the most famous platform, WordPress, and some of the more useful uh, plugins and such. All right, so let me give you this document. Not necessary for you to print it, uh, but I'm going to give you this document, which is a variation on what I give for my clients. As I said, uh, that Texcoco client, if you visited them at the beginning of the year, the site was, was version 2.0. This is the 3.0 version now. It was a simpler site, not as robust, not as powerful. A lot of the the terminology, the verbiage was was not where it sh what it needed to be. This website's been updated, and it's still being updated. Um, but we started with this. Uh, we started with a comprehensive marketing plan, um, and it's okay. Uh, as I said, it's still being updated. We're still adding content to it. You don't have to think that my site has to be done before anyone knows about it. Not necessary. You want to get out at least the foundation of your site to be out there. Uh, for you to start to get activity. 
because one of the three pillars, remember I mentioned authority, another pillar is longevity. The longer you are online, the better. Websites, we saw in that result that there was a website that its search engine result was from 2009. So it's been around a while. It's been linked to, it's been commented on, it's been tweeted, it's been shared, it's been gaining authority because it's had longevity. So if you're going to wait another 6 months, 12 months to put your website out, you could be losing on time to be in existence. So you could put out at least the home page of your website and then fill in the about and fill in the products and all of that. The sooner you get your website out, at least the basics, the better. You start to build longevity, which builds authority. And we'll talk about the third pillar a little later. So, in order uh, for this change to be made, we needed a plan. So, um, the big, um, uh, the, the big, the heavy hitter on my in my team, Sharna, which is the one that has the degree in I forget what, but uh, she's got the degree in that was able to do the the deep research part of this aspect. Uh, the we had a, a meeting with the owner of the restaurant. There he is, right there, Francisco. Uh, he, um, we, we talked to him, we had him fill out some questionnaires, answer some questions, uh, which I'm going to give you a modified version of right now. The importance of this is for you to kind of understand where you are before you decide where you are going. So uh, I'll give you the document here. Uh, minimize everything and go to the desktop. We're going to access the network folder, so let's go to the desktop. On the desktop, open up computer. You can only do this on campus. If you didn't, if you didn't save a copy of this today, email me and I'll send you a copy of it. But here's where it is in this room. Uh, in this window here, open up the classroom data drive Z, the Z drive, Z, the Z drive. This is a bunch of uh, class files. Scroll down, it's alphabetical, and go over to Campus SEO. Open that folder. Alphabetical, Campus SEO. And then what you can do is drag a copy of that file. Don't double click it, but drag a copy to the desktop so that you can get your own copy. Go ahead and copy it to the desktop. So from this network folder, all you have to do is just drag it to your desktop. And once you've got a copy on your desktop, then you can double click. So don't print it, please. This thing is loud. You can print at the end of the day if you want. I don't recommend you print it because you can just fill it out in Word. But uh, drag it to your desktop, and once you have a copy, double click it to open it. Just look over someone's shoulder how it looks because it might look slightly different. So once you copy it over um, and you open it, this is something that you want to fill out. Again, there's no homework in, these, in this class. You're not going to get a grade. You're going to get something more tangible. You're going to get more traffic to your site. You're going to get those types of results. So this is not necessary for you to fill out and turn in. I'm not going to grade it. But I can look at it if you want to get some feedback and such. But uh, you're going to fill out your company name again. I use the terminology of company and all of that, but it could be your nonprofit, it could be yourself. Maybe you're selling um, your paintings, so put your own name, whatever. This is your company profile. Just for some practice, I'm going to fill it out here. I'm going to say uh, Victor's Bakery Company Profile. Put your name. Today's date. 
just so that you have a record about when you worked on this. Company profile would be like the services offered or? Uh, no, just, um, well, on the next page, it, no, just leave the term company profile because this oh, okay. thing is the company profile. Yeah, this document is the company profile. Uh, so that's the cover page, and then on the next page, this is what you're going to fill in. Uh, we've got these sections, and I'll go in detail. Company name, tagline, about us, mission statement, values, personality, fundamentals. So you should fill out these sections as best as possible. We're not going to do it right now. I'm going to explain them, and then you can do it at your pace, and I'm going to give you then another activity that we will concentrate a little bit more time on. But in general here, uh, again, you want to have this foundation before you move forward. You just don't want to go straight for the target. You want practice before you try to hit the target. So you're going to take a moment, and this is what we did for Texcoco. Uh, we, we had Francisco answer these questions. So what is the name of your company? If you, haven't, if you don't have one, you can create one for this assignment. Remember, it will be used throughout the semester. For example, my web design company will be Vic.co, pronounced Vic.co, and it comes from my name. So take a moment. If your company name is Victor's Bakery, write that in. And maybe why that name was chosen. If you've got a very unique name, um, the name comes from my grandfather, or whatever. Just You're going to fill in whatever you want here, as much as you want, as much as you can so that you have content, you have, a, you have an, an understanding of your own company, and this content will also help you throughout the semester, throughout the course, to apply. This is going to be something that you will be able to apply to the different facets of SEO and SEM. Tagline. Um, so a simple phrase. Look at Texcoco over here, right at the top. Traditional Mexican lamb barbecue. In one sentence, it tells you what it's about. Uh, so your your tagline can be literal or it can be emotional, in that this is literally tells you what it's about. Emotional. An example would be Nike. What's Nike's tagline? Just do it. What does that mean? Just do your taxes on time? Well. It has an emotional connection nowadays from all of these years of existence. But if you don't have one, you want to think about it. And again, fill it in as best as you can at some point. I'm going to say uh, San Diego's premier uh, organic fair trade gluten-free non GMO, etc., etc., bakery. So whatever, catchphrase, tagline, about us, you'll do this on your own. Uh, write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in this business? How will you make the company succeed? So again, something that you'll need to think about. We won't spend time on it at the moment, but uh, this is the this is the about us content that you might just need to copy and paste from your existing about us page, or maybe you don't have an about us page. Well, this is the time. Well, this will be the document to create that, so that then when the time comes, add it to your site. You can look at Texcoco as an example uh, if you need inspiration, or visit any of the websites you like and look at their about page and see what's there. Mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. Again, this is a, there's an art here as well as a science to it. If you're not a good writer, find someone that's a good writer. Uh, write something, have them proofread it, or hire someone, or get in touch with someone that's a good writer. This is the th this is the the meat on the bones of your of your website. These are the details that help create that elevate a, a company to a brand. 
to a, a, an identity, to a lifestyle. Right? Nike's a lifestyle. Um, what um, is your mission? What are you trying to provide uh, for, for clients? Um, again, look at the mission statements or the About Us pages of your favorite companies for inspiration. Values. What are some keywords, so one or two word phrases, that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency, creativity, tolerance. And then you can follow that link for more examples. So what are these, uh, what are these keywords that your company believes in? Uh, again, they'll, make, uh, they'll be more useful and make more sense as we go on, especially with SEM, so uh, search engine marketing. Personality. Think of your company as a person. Uh, because the Supreme Court does. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. That might sound uh, frivolous or trivial, but again, what makes a company into a brand, into a lifestyle, into an entity? If you think about the company as a person, Write a sentence or two about how does the company behave? What's its personality? Is it a serious, stoic company that will keep your financial portfolio in check? That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear, this is a fun-loving party um, financial planner. I don't want that with my money. I want that with my um, restaurants. And then fundamentals. Just make a note of some of the basic things like the company address, real, make one up, website if you have one, email, contact address, and any social media pro profiles you may already have. Do you have a Twitter? Write the address. Do you have a LinkedIn? Write the address. That's, That's under fundamentals. So um, you, you want to work at this at your own pace. I'm going to give you that file for you to work with. Uh, you can, um, if you bought a, flat, a USB flash drive, you can take it with you. If you didn't, uh, you can email me, and I'll email you a digital copy of it. Um, you can email this to yourself as well. Um, again, um, I have another activity I want to work on, but uh, take this to work with. This is something that we do for real clients. We need to know about the client before we can work for them effectively. Any general questions on this? You can. You can send it as an email attachment to yourself. If you need any help, call me during the, the lab time and I'll help you out. The email is not set up here. You will have to log in through your own email, but during lab time, call me over or not. I want to give you now is another hands-on activity that we'll spend some time on. Where now, let's say we accomplish this. Know thyself. We know our company. We know what we're about. What we want to do, etc. This activity then is about researching the competition. This is also something we do for our clients. So in this activity, it's just doing research on the competition, doing do, doing a key uh, searches in two ways. I've got here the old way, the new way. The introduction. What does your brand offer? Nowadays, search engines don't rank you very well unless you have good content. It's not just about keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants you will have a better chance of being found from authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So it's about the long tail of keywords or themes. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this assignment, you'll f find your long tail. And just to kind of show you something here, 
Um, this is just a very simple chart here. This is the long tail concept. Um, this is potential keywords, how common they are, and how many results. So, let me, oops, let me write that here. Results. Keywords. So, there's going to be a section where a particular keyword gives a lot of results. You're going to be a needle in a haystack. Then there's going to be, further over here, a set of keywords that are less found. So we want to pay attention more to that section, the long tail. It trails off over there that less common keywords, more specific search terms, are going to give less results. Therefore, you're an easier needle in a haystack to find. This is where if I search for Italian food restaurants, 2 million results. Authentic Italian food restaurants in Chula Vista, only 1,000 results. And maybe three of those top results are mine. One is on Yelp, and one is on YouTube, and one is the menu page. So this concept of the long tail is what we've got here on the sheet. The first section is we'll do a little bit of research about thinking like people. Both of these are about how would potential customers possibly find us. Let's think like them. The first one is we're going to think like a less savvy user that is going to search for Italian food restaurants. And we'll see what results come up, make notes and such. The second one is more, more of us are getting a bit more savvy and the search engines themselves are getting smarter and they're going to start suggesting more detailed types of searches, the long tail. So we'll see about both. So what we'll do is, uh, you can open your web browser and we'll go back to google.com And we're going to make some notes, and either on a regular sheet of paper, maybe the one I gave you, or a little bit easier is if we open up Microsoft Word on our computers here, we'll just be able to copy and paste. That'll be easier, I think. Let's go to the Start menu and search for Word. We'll use Microsoft Word. So I'm going to open Word in one window, and I'll uh, maybe write up here uh, long term, I mean uh, long tail strategy notes. And you can save the file whatever you want, long term strategy notes. DOC is fine. And uh, again, this is this is something that we do for clients. Uh, this is why we gave them a 40-page results, because we had we answered those questions that I gave you, plus some other ones that I'll give next time. And uh, we did this keyword research, the, this long tail keyword research, found the competition, synthesized the results, and gave the owner a 40-page document that has our findings their weaknesses, their strengths, and our recommendations, and that's what we've been applying little by little this whole year. Save that to the desktop. So my first item here, the old way, keywords. Go to a search engine. So this should be done on Google and Bing. We'll start it with Google first and plug in simple keywords from your niche or topic. So uh, we, we, did, we looked at that briefly earlier when I said, now look for the keyword that your company's about. I'm gonna try that again. Social media. I'm just gonna do social media marketing. These are the results that I get. I'm gonna ignore the paid results, again, because they paid 
to get to the top. So I've got a Wikipedia article, ignore that. I've got a Mashable article, ignore that. I'm going to look to see if there are any results from real companies. Entrepreneur.com, no. Forbes, no. Search Engine Land, what is social media marketing? No. News, no. Okay, I'm not getting very many uh, real results. That's what I'm trying to show you. You may get something like this. I'm not getting any company results from that generic search term. I wanted someone to do my social media for me. They're social media marketers. I search for more social media marketing. I get more like articles and then, of course, those that paid for top results. What is this you're talking about? What's that? I'm not sure where to go. Well, I have it right here. I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, we're searching for a particular generic keyword, and then we're going to make notes on what our results are. Uh, so. Well, that is that the search engines have changed, where we used to be able to type in that keyword and maybe appear. And now because the keyword strategy, the old strategy, has changed, we can't rely on it, on it anymore. So when I said earlier about maybe you're going to hire one to hire someone to do this for you and they're going to say, yeah, we're going to get all your keywords, we're going to put your keywords everywhere, you're going to be you're going to be golden. If they're still relying on this strategy, they might not be the best SEO company because I'm showing you here the old method doesn't quite work anymore. Type Italian restaurant, it might not pop up. Exactly, it might be too generic. Too <laughs> generic. Yeah, so everyone's going to be a little bit different in your particular niche because people need trees cut down all the time. There's different results. Here, I'm searching for something that is not tangible. I'm searching for marketing, I'm social, searching for social media marketing. So I get a lot of results from articles where you're seeing results of actual companies. So you're gonna do you're gonna research your competition. Following along here, I've got for each page of results, you're gonna then uh, see what is a result here. I'm I'm gonna need to go back to page two maybe to get a real company. Um, okay, this one: social media marketing services and consultancy consultancy at Brafton. Second page of results actually gave me a real company. I found one. So what I want to do in the Word document is copy and paste this. Select copy that. In my document here, I'm going to right click, but I recommend if you right click, select the option keep text only so that it doesn't bring in all of the styling and sizes and all of that. So I'm going to go in and collect as many as, as you want. I've got here three, for example. You're going to go in and see what your competitors have here. You're going to see what they have. You're going to see how we can do it better. Well, just to get just to get some information, like my goal is to get three results at least. I might need to go to page five. I just want to get the results of three real companies. So the next one you go with what? What's that? Our results might have been different. Let's see, I got uh, Brafton and then... Huh. No, I didn't, I didn't... I don't think I got the same one that you did. The next one that I got was scottmonty.com.
Yeah, on mine is mine went to page three. But whatever page yours shows up under is fine. So I'll let you keep researching yours. But what I what I the point of this is okay. We're researching competition. We're seeing results. For example, scottmonte.com. He was the second real company that appeared from my very generic search term. And again, you say, well, I would never search like that. I would search for, you know, modern web designers in Hillcrest. Yes, that's you. You have to put yourself into your potential client's shoes. Not everyone is as savvy as you, perhaps. So we want to do a little bit of research on the people that are not as savvy with search engines. You, they might type something as generic as this. Later on, we'll see that maybe that keyword term right there cost $2 to, to place for. Uh, on the second activity, we'll look at a, a different way to do it, which might be more affordable. But remember, we're not going to need to pay for anything. Uh, I've gathered this bit of data, and again, uh, what I, what I want to do here is, is make some notes. For example, these results came in, and Brafton.com, ScottMonty.com. Scott Monty, I'm 99% sure, is a person's name. Brafton.com seems to be a person's name too, a last name perhaps. I can make a note here that I seem to be seeing under these two results that it's important that a person's name in the address appeared uh, to, get, to get found. Well, my website doesn't have my name, was that going to hurt me? It may or may not. This is the research part. This is, this, is, this is how we find these answers. I can't give everyone the answer to say, yes, your name, your family name should be on your website. It might not matter. It depends on your website. But through research, we can find that answer. Uh, further research, I'm actually going to click a result. For example, Scott Monty. I'm going to go to his website. I'm going to look around and see what's on their website. Any impressions, any emotional reactions is fine. A lot about what marketing is is also on an emotional level. Think about ads that you remember because of the emotion that might have been associated with it right away. What I see here, it's seems like a competent website. I think it's a little too cluttered. Too many things, too many boxes. It's very boxy. I, I see, however, that content is being added, added on a regular basis. June, uh, September 5th was an upload, uh, a blog post. August 29th, July 22nd, so it seems to be uh, monthly or so. <clears throat> I don't like that there's so much animation. I see this slider, and this is a common technique of having a little picture scroll around, but I kind of don't like that. Also, some text is catching my attention over here, and these blog posts are animating too. These are the things I would be writing down. Too busy, cluttered, I like their logo. Oh, they have a blog. So making notes and impressions about this result. Question. It's uh, it's more important to have original content because the search engines are, are going to rank you higher for that because you're contributing something useful to the world. You know, that sounds very lofty, but they think about themselves that way too. In that if you're just gonna be posting something that's already been there, someone might have already seen it. But if you're creating something new and useful, uh, it's something new that the search engines would want to, um, you know, to spread. So I recommend to have more original content. And it doesn't have to be 100% of the time original content. Uh, a rule of thumb that you could follow is 80-20. 80% 80 original content, 20% uh, shared content. That ratio may go up and down depending on what your product is, your website. But you usually want original content. 
because again, that could be abused. You can go to websites that you can buy 1,000 articles and then put out a new article every week because I need to put out content. Yeah, but someone else also paid to get those 1,000 articles and you'll have the exact copy of that article somewhere else on the web and the search engines don't like that. You'll both get ranked lower. So I do an RSS feed from Google Alerts would be probably a bad way to do it? That would not be useful. Uh, okay, so some notes. The website is too cluttered. Um, timely blog. That's good. Slideshow is nice, but too much other animation. So basically, we're evaluating our web website. These are your competitors, but we need to try to evaluate them in the most um, impartial way. Uh, think of yourself again as a potential client what might they like or not like about your site what you what you don't like what you don't like about their site is what you want to avoid on your site for example i'm seeing a lot of these pictures are very blurry and low quality what's up with that so don't put blurry low quality pictures on your website it looks bad on their on your competitors it'll look bad on yours question it, it seems to me like that Yes, and that's a very good point. Some of you are going to run into that. You're not going to crack the top 10 on your own. You might crack the top 10 by being on a best list. Uh, the techniques that we're going to be talking about will apply to both, local or international, and then depending on your particular needs, you'll take out of it what is necessary. So if I am going to be selling a product that ships internationally, what we'll talk about will be useful to that. And then we'll talk about also, well, if you want to target very local neighborhoods where I'm going to sell my pizza, we'll talk about what that's how that's useful too. So I'm going to say here, too many blurry pictures. So you're making notes about what's good, what's not good, what you like, what you don't like, what you don't like you want to avoid. I'll point out things that I would also recommend to avoid on your web design, because again, this, this is a bit of judging a book by its cover. Uh, this particular website... Um, has like I said a slideshow. These are these are popular at the moment. They're probably on the way down of popularity at the at the moment. But this is a way uh, to get uh, people to show them something fresh when they visit your website. Um, I would be careful about using a slideshow though about the speed of it. Um, this one seems to be going at a reasonable speed, but it's very disorienting in that every single slide is like a different animation. And some of the pictures don't even work. Look at that. Are these websites like <clears throat> copyrighted material or I mean, you copied somebody's website if you like it or how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can copy it. Um, when I showed a moment earlier about looking at that code, I can copy the code. And, th and that's the nature of, of the web actually, that basically anything that you put on a website if anyone can try hard enough, they can take it. So, well, then that's pretty horrifying. All my hard work can be stolen. The short answer is yes. <laughs> but the longer answer is that you have recourse, legal recourse. For example, at the bottom here, copyright, Scott Monty. So websites are copyrighted. Websites can be copyrighted. Yeah. When they are, um, the, the basic copyright is that when something is in a tangible format, you've copyrighted it. So it was always about, well, if you mail a copy to yourself, you've copyrighted it. Yeah, but how are you going to mail a website to yourself? So uh, as long as you have at the minimum some sort of copyright notice with your name, you've got some minimal amount of legal protection. So if you see that your content is stolen elsewhere, you can get the legal process going to show that you've got this proof that my website's been around five years and my content is showing up on their site. So um, there's higher levels where you then register trademarks, Patents and all of that, which costs money, but so then you have more protection. Website, 
that site or how do you know? I mean, you might take you might take some aspects of it. How do you decide what aspects you can take before you're doing the copyright? I'm not a lawyer and I can't really say that, but um, it depends on the site. Uh, the owners of the site sometimes people give out because you have to separate two things the content and the presentation the presentation is this slideshow the content is the blog post I'm not gonna ever for myself or any of my clients steal content but I might like that slideshow that usually is fair game when we, when we talk about WordPress, we'll see that we can download this exact plugin because the author gives it out to the world to use. So the content itself, be very careful about taking people's content. The design and that sort of thing is a different area. And specifically, maybe this layout, you know, no one can copyright this. Six boxes with a little drop shadow and then a, a date. No one's going to copyright that. But the, the design of it, the presentation of it, that's a little bit more open for us to kind of evolve. Question. Usually copyright has to do more with um, with a little bit of a more tangible thing. Uh, for example, um, I'm sure there's other examples. The one that comes right to my mind is about all of these recent uh, uh, celebrity photos that were stolen and posted online, some of the actresses are taking legal action by saying they've copyrighted their photos so they can take legal action. So usually you can copyright more tangible things, copyrighting the whole website itself. That's a collection of uh, a variety of aspects. So again, I'm not a lawyer. I would, I would con uh, con confirm with a lawyer. What I can tell you from my experience, for example, Texcoco, well, let me show a different site actually, Los Hollywood band.com. This is a musical group up and coming. If I can type the name right. Um, they are um, they copyright their music for example. Right? The lyrics and all of that. And um, so here we go. So the photos, this photo, that's copyrighted. This music video, that's copyrighted. There's a, of course a copyright notice at the bottom of the, of the site that the content is copyrighted, but you know, to have a big bold picture at the top, no one can copyright that. You can make your own website with a big picture on a white background. So does that make sense? With how it's laid out, you can lay it out like that and do your own thing, that's fine as well. Usually, yes. Again, it's um, depends on the um, on the creators of the site. Some might be more litigious than others. But um, if you take the WordPress class, we talk about uh, setting up a site, a nice looking site in WordPress that um, should be, you know, legally clear and we'll see the power of WordPress to be able to create an interesting, an interesting site. This is made in WordPress as well. Notice it has a very different design, a different style than this one or the, any of the others I've shown. So my first chunk here, this is the old way. We would be doing research on these simple keywords. We would be seeing what the competition has. The second method, the new way, the long tail, this is where we get more specific. This is where we would search for um, maybe a whole sentence, an actual question. People nowadays are starting to write a question into the search engine, such as, what's a good Italian food restaurant in Chula Vista. You can type a whole question. The search engines are getting smarter. When you t start to type a question, um, they're going to analyze everything that you type, yes, but also try to get your intent a little bit more. The search engines used to be really dumb in that they would see these two keywords. Um, like let's say star and burst, and give you weird results when you're actually looking for the company Starburst Industries, let's say. 
now they can kind of deal with the whole question a little bit better. In this case, what's a good Italian food restaurant in Chula Vista? You may or may not get this result as well. Did any of you in your searching get this sort of like um, gallery? Maybe a few of you. I want to get there. I want my client to get there. I do have my client right there. Number one on this cool um, gallery and number one on the search results as well, right there. Italianissimo Trattoria is a client of mine. Very good Italian restaurant. Wait a minute, they're number one, but they're on Yelp. Their Yelp review is number one. If I scroll down, they're also on a best restaurants in Chula Vista list on TripAdvisor. And Urban Spoon. And then, what result is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ninth place is the actual home page of the restaurant, but it's on the first page. But any other link would have still taken you to the home page. So this is what we need to deal with a bit more nowadays. A more complete term or concept, the long tail. Thinking like people are frustrated with getting a million results that are wrong. So they start to type a longer, result, a longer search query, a bigger detailed question. This is what you're going to now do in the second section here, and make notes of those results. But before that, I have a little note here. It says, in a clean search engine, search for a complete phrase from your niche. The note right there, clean, at the bottom. A clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. If your main web browser is Chrome, for example, use Firefox for when you need to search. Each browser is different. You'll have to find out how to reset yours. This is important to get results like how your potential visitors or customers would. So people come to my classes all the time and they tell me, I search, for my, I ser I search like this on my home computer and my site always comes up number one and I go over to my friend's house and I'm not on page one what's going on what's going on is that the search engines are remembering what you're searching for and try to give you results to help you if you're always visiting a certain website or always doing a kind of search your results will be different from if you have a brand new clean slate of a search of a web browser so that's why I note here However your web browser does it, you'll have to figure it out. Somewhere here in the options or somewhere there's delete cookies, clear the cache. You want to clear out the search, the web browser so that it has no memory of what you've already searched for so that it doesn't skew your results. Not that it's trying to hurt you, it's trying to help you. I want to keep finding that, uh, that, that product easily so it'll keep giving me top results. Your potential clients won't see that. It's their first time searching for you. Right here, these computers, every time we turn them off, they reset. So I just did this search. I haven't done it all day today. This is a clean web browser in this case. I searched for this term and my clients came here. I didn't come in here and search before the class to give myself a skewed result. I did this spur of the moment. Uh, so the second type of search you want to do is first reset your web browser. You'll have to find out how to do that. But this is the part that's kind of boring. You're going to look at your competitors. You're going to wring your hands when you say they did that and, and it's cool and I wish I thought of it. You're going to look and you're going to see what they did bad and you're going to resolve not to do it. You're going to make notes in the long tail results. Uh, this, this just changed from the last time I did it, but in the long tail results there is no other Italian food restaurant on these top results. When I did this a few months ago in class, the competitor that's on the same street a few blocks down was on this first page, and now they're not. Question? Um, 
in the notes that you made uh, about like the spot Monty or whatever, um, I mean, like your you know reasons for why you think a website is what it is because you're a professional. Like this is what you do. How can you go to a website and actually know that like I mean, not just your opinion, but like what you're like what to look for? Does that make sense? Yeah, you could think about it. Uh, let's let's say they. Uh, they're going to sell a product. How easy is it for you to buy the product? Do you have to go through five steps? Do you have to create an account? That's annoying. I just want to click buy. So any impression that you have about any way that you use the site or how you see the site are valid for you to write. And, and yes, I have more experience to see what's good and bad and all of that, and I'll be putting those opinions throughout the course of the semester. Um, but but basically, uh, whatever feels to you as a positive or a negative, make a note of it. And then as the semester goes on, I'll point out things to do and not to do. Question? I just wonder, um, will you be talking about landing pages somewhere Probably not. I usually don't get to that because it's a little bit more uh, detailed or uh, that relies a lot on the SEM portion of things. In this class, it's funny, it varies. Sometimes it's three weeks, sometimes it's four weeks. We have a little bit more time to do some work. I don't know, this month it's three weeks. So we might not be able to get to everything, but I'll have other resources that I can point us to for whatever we don't get to. This is what I was saying a, a moment ago. So the other competitor, Manja Italiano, uh, Restaurant Manja on third, I guess they changed their name. Now they're on the second page. They used to be on the first page, like my client, and now they're over there. Casabella is on the same street too, but these guys are on the second page. So what I'm saying is the long, t the long tail keywords are what we need to focus on nowadays. The old way, the new way. The old way has been abused, it doesn't have much use anymore. The new way is what we need to embrace. People are, are going to be searching for more detail. Once we kind of compile this list, the third item here, then we'll actually apply these words and phrases and concepts in the following classes. That's why you're going to need to bring your password next time so that we can connect your site with the search engines and be able to edit your site. If you don't have a site, well, again, take good notes um, and uh, you'll be able to apply what we do when, when you have a site. strategy. By researching your competition, you are seeing what has worked for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to your competition. You will use your long tail keywords throughout your site, in posts, pages, etc. But you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site. And again, the, the differentiation of that will make sense as we go on. You will become an authority in the field you've targeted. You will create content on a regular basis, and you will spread this content through the internet. Refer to Chapter 1, Quality Content, in the SEO 2014 book for more insight into writing quality content, and I'll give some excerpts of it next time. You will learn to do this together in future activities. So there's still a lot to cover. We're about to wrap up in a moment. When we come back, we'll have more activities, more hands-on. Any general questions right now? Make notes of those questions, bring them in next time, or email me. Uh, we'll take some, we'll do some lab time until 3.30 if you need some one-on-one -on -one help a bit. But I'm going to wrap up the lecture at this moment. Uh, thank you for coming. Remember that when you come next time, just get in line as normal. When I get here, then I'll uh, let in you that have already signed up. If you come in one minute late, your seat might be taken, and that's school policy. So uh, be here on time. Make sure you've printed your name on the pink sheet and enrolled with the sticker sheet. That's it. Uh, so what are your priorities if we're here on time? Yes. We don't see here two hours. <clears throat> we're going to get priority over coming first. Okay. There's still a seat in the ward that was last on Friday. No, I can't. I missed the one that's last Friday. Let me check here. Oh, yeah.